take this opportunity. Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. My name is Ryan. Been doing YouTube for about five years now. The Hylion product I've been putting out for the last couple of years, uh, maybe a little shorter than that on a weekly basis, but I felt it in the best interest of the timing of the company and evolution of, of its opportunity uh, to double down on the frequency, offer my perspective on this story. Um, there's been so much that has evolved in this story up to this point. Um, here we are, November 20th, and, and I dare suggest that are we at an impasse with this company? Um, just throughout the course of this year, I've been putting out content and really without the assistance of uh, but a few other entities out there, uh, the Discord group being that uh, solid core uh, nucleus that solid core group of individuals who saw this opportunity for what it is and it hasn't changed it really hasn't the company has progressed wonderfully in the face of what has been an absolutely horrendous stock ride for anybody who's been involved with this company it's been atrocious now, for the seasoned investors who understand the opportunity and have uh, taken solace in watching the disconnect between the company and the stock and truly understanding that at this particular juncture with the stock, things are just getting started and and therefore it, it um, almost enters into the immaterial category when starting to judge the company based on the stock. Um, people get aggressive, people get desperate, um, you know, people get frustrated with what they think the company should be doing. Um, I've engaged in that dialogue over the last year or so, trying to challenge what it is that I see uh, about the company and, and maybe suggesting that they weren't doing enough through a specific time frame, right or wrong. None of that really matters up to this point. We have just closed down Q3 for Hylion, which I thought was a fairly neutral quarter for the company uh, in true conservative Hylion fashion. Um, they come out, they present the numbers, uh, they discuss the sales, they discuss the progress, and they discuss expectations going forward. Would it be safe to say or suggest amongst my audience and the people who tune into me, you guys need to understand a little bit about what I'm trying to do here, and that's dig beyond just status quo discussion. And I think for many, many years past, I think many, many retail investors specifically have been left left in the dust. Unfortunately, Hylion has been no different in that front. Um, the statistics would show that the transition of wealth uh, from the impatient to the patient uh, is alive and well. Um, retail investors, I don't know who these people are. They sure as hell aren't part of my community, nor are they part of the Discord community, are throwing in the towel on this opportunity segueing those shares to the institutions out there we'll discuss a little bit and i really think that's unfortunate i would rather see a retail investor not even get involved in this game this game without truly understanding the magnitude of risk risk and i, I don't define risk as being a recessed stock price I'm talking about real risk to capital and a total catastrophic loss of said capital. Perhaps maybe people buy into a false narrative when they enter into a, an opportunity like this and many others with unfair expectations as to the time necessary to materialize into something. And number two, what those expectations are going to be. And those two coupled with each other uh, in adequate time and unfair expectations of a specific story or a specific company or, or whatever that might be is a very, very dangerous 
recipe when we're talking about stock market investing in general. And we start to try to codify those two things in um, in in a matter of a few years, one, two years. I spoke about this a little bit, and I do speak about it. I think all too often we have gotten so impatient as a society that it bleeds over into stock market investing in that we somehow default to this idea that we can just find an opportunity invest in said opportunity, or even better, talk to somebody who's pulsed into the market like me and get that that recommendation without having to do the due diligence, trip, fall into said opportunity and end up making X number of dollars. I, I don't, I, I say X number because I just think people's realistic expectations are lost when they look at what it is they're doing with their position, what what it is that they want to get out of the position, what what are the tangible pieces of that company that they're investing in. And in this particular game, all of those expectations that you might have may end up to be and prove futile because companies like this are never, ever going to traverse along a, a linear path. It's not going to work that way. I've said many, many times, I believe that this company is going to go through its ups and it's going to go through its downs. If you want to be an investor in the company, you have to do one very, very simple thing. And I'll chalk it up to my old onus. Buy the company, hold the company. It will be the easiest, most difficult thing that you'll ever do. I'm sorry if that confuses a lot of people, but let me break it down into um, something a little bit more realistic. I have watched this company go through swoons, and I've watched them go through um, increases in the stock price. We're up about 20% month over month here. Um, excuse me, just this month. Uh, in November, we're up about 20 bits. Okay. Nothing crazy. I think this stock has thousands and thousands of percent to, to render into the future. That's just my own opinion. Speaks to my bullish conviction. I can say what I think and I can say what I want to happen. Whether or not it happens, I have no idea. Um, I'm willing to put in the um, undefined amount of time to actually make that happen. But I find it interesting and it speaks to the lack of investing intelligence. I, I will try to be above board with this. When people seemingly get excited about the company, when they look at the company and the stock is going up like it is right now, marginally, people are looking at this because they know it's been compressed for a long, long time. And Hylion has a badass story. Okay. Hylion will materialize into something very, very interesting. What that is, I don't know. But what I find extremely convenient for a lot of people out there is when they start to see little pieces of come together. Maybe there's a little bit of insider buyership with Hylion. Maybe there's a little bit of institutional buying, which has been going on for the last many, many months. If you've paid attention to this story, eh, sweep it under the rug. It's no big deal. Hylion's going to zero. Thomas Healy's a bad CEO. Thomas Healy doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, Hylion doesn't provide enough PR to provide one of my own uh, criticisms, to be fair. And they look at the Hylion opportunity and, and it starts to catch a little bit of favor. And all of these rationales start to come from the forefront as to why that might be. A second really dangerous aspect to this game that I see is is rampant. Um, and it is uh, one of the most dangerous uh, elements. And one that I don't understand in stock market investing is that we start to pit two ponies against each other, Hylion and Nicola. Hylion just surpassed Nicola in stock price. To me, that means absolutely nothing. Um, I've watched these two companies trade in correlation with each other for the last two years. 
that to me was frustrating because I don't think these two companies even should be mentioned in the same category with each other. They are for very obvious reasons. They came to market about the same time. They both enjoyed about the same hype run up, uh, Nikola being significantly more than that. Um, they were and came to public markets via the SPAC process. Um, they are in what Nikola would disclose to be the class eight market as well as Hylion. So there is some reason to understand that because Nikola goes up or down, that therefore Hylion must go up and must go down. And for me, that correlation between the two companies, which I think there is some small fragmented piece of said correlation, was the most frustrating piece for me. And if there's any consolation that I can take and highly on taking the lead position in uh, what has been well-deserved and well-documented. We're going to talk about some of the buying that's happened um, in highly on. Are we at the precipice of a turnaround? I only pause in asking that question because it is dangerous to think along these lines. Um, I'm not one of those status quo players that seemingly want to just pick winners. And my winners, if they end up being losers, I just kind of lollygag along the line and look for new winners. Mm -mm. I don't do that. I'm looking to challenge the very nature of the opportunity made possible by public markets. And I think years from now, I think people will study my philosophy about observing financial markets from the perspective of somebody who does not have a finance degree. Um, I do not have an accounting degree. I'm not a certified financial planner, nor would I ever become one. But I have boatloads and countless, countless hours of self-study, experience, and logic, um, as well as discretion that's coming out my ears. To evaluate a company, observe and try to qualify what has gone on over the last two years of exacerbated retail investors selling, even selling from a retail perspective from the top guy himself, Thomas Healy. Are we at the precipice of a, of a turnaround? Of course not, Ryan. The stock's going to zero. Okay. Of course not, Ryan. The stock's going to zero. So I can buy. Fair enough. Um, your opinions, uh, as much as you can move your mouth and push air through it uh, to get people's attention, to form words that make absolutely zero sense to people like myself, fine and dandy. Fine and dandy. November 20th, 2022, the Hylion uh, Hypertruck ERX Innovation Council was established in 2021. How and where do you think over the coming 10 years do you believe that uh, value is going to be extrapolated from that ERX council? Do you think that they're going to be the drop point for Carno R&D as the hypertruck is turned out amongst the fleets? But I don't know, Ryan. Hylion doesn't have a product. No shit. They don't have a product. Interesting. Um, they are in the who's who of fleets right now and many more enjoying the actual hybrid EX product. There's been more and more photos that have come up and I am not one of those to provide you uh, to those resources. However, the highly on discord group is and they are like a piranha tank. Think about them as being your very best adv advocate to fight those battles that maybe you do not have time to fight. Uh, nor do you have the wherewithal or the resources or the time to fight those battles. Join the Highly on Discord group for free of charge and let those piranhas go fight those battles for you. I look at it that way. They know I appreciate their work. That's simple. Tell them thanks every now and then. 
are we so immune as a society to just join the discord group and expect that they're just going to show you the path to riches overnight? Probably people are bitches. Now they have unfair expectations about everything that they do. They think that just because they find this niche of YouTube, the independent investor channel and pick up a referral to a discord group that somehow they're owed something. You're not owned shit. Okay. I'm not here to fluff your ass. Okay. I'm probably providing you one of the greatest opportunities ever that I have seen with regard to a transformational company looking to solve one of the biggest pain point problems that we have in an industry right now that is dubbed the number one polluter, a $1 trillion addressable market to go after, and highly on seemingly, seemingly is the only game in town. I do not give credence to Tesla, and I do not give credence to Nikola. I never have. I never have. Um, I think whatever innovations and advancements Nikola has made on the hydrogen fuel cell front hopefully come to fruition for a better planet. I absolutely do. I'd love to see I'd love to see their plan come to fruition. The problem is there was a few major, major craters in their business plan. And just as of a couple of days, one of the major advocates for Nicola uh, on YouTube has just shed some light on these very craters that I've been talking about for months and months and months and months. Give proper credence? Of course not. Of course not. I don't expect that through YouTube, nor do I need it. However, it's the truth. That's the truth. I've been talking about these things for many many months in cross comparing these two companies and where one would suggest that the look of the truck is is somehow old and that we need to actually rethink our design of the truck just recently as of within the last 24 hours this content creators has actually said what a nice looking truck three times in the making of his most latest video I'm going to try to be above board with this. But here's the funny thing. I talk about the application in investing. When you look at a stock and your only justification for coming up with either negatives when the stock is doing bad or positives when the stock is doing good is about as elementary of a dipshit type of approach to investing that I could ever impart to you. And for somebody that's in their 50s and 60s, it just speaks to me how you can't teach a new, an old dog new tricks. Are we that immune to learning? I look back at when I was 20 and I was an idiot. I look back when I was 30 and I was starting to get it. Now I look back five years ago when I'm 40 and from 40 to 45, something really funny has started to happen. Um, perhaps maybe I really did buy into the Socratic method. But what I observe on the landscape is that there's a lot of smart cookies out there, okay? Um, and they've all got their niches. They all have their deficiencies, just like me. I've got my niches. I'm very, very good at a lot of things and not so good at others. And you want to know something, that's totally fine. But I will never, ever succumb to this attitude that for an acute amount of time, I have all the answers for you. It's the opposite. I'm always looking to be critical. I'm always looking to identify what potentially could go wrong in this deal. But where I see the application of all of a sudden now, Nikola stock price is sunk below Hylion's Therefore, there must be something going on with Hylion that needs exploiting, right? We've got to put in our, ti our title on YouTube, Hylion, Hylion, Hylion News. Hylion News is good, and Hylion must be doing good things. Subscribe to my channel. That type of stuff I'll call out all day, and it just speaks to using the hot button item in the current juncture for your own personal benefit, okay? If I had any opportunity to take the masses, masses of my detractors and actually bottle up the independent bullshit, 
and just put a big bow on it and send it back to them, I would just give it all away. Because if I was ever putting out content like that for my own personal benefit, look, do I want to see, see the story evolve? Yes, yes, I do. But if you go back to the very first Hylion video and watch it all the way up until what I consider to be this potential impasse in time, November 20th, you will not see detraction in my message. You won't. You won't. Okay. I tried to work the bull and bear case on this company. I tried to speak diplomatically without a, 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 a bias to influence. Now, I do have a bias as a share owner in the, in the company, and that's fine. That's fine. But all of a sudden now we have an emergence of people who will try to catch what I am calling a potential impasse in this company. Now, will the stock go down to 250? I have no idea. Don't really care. It's immaterial at this point. It was immaterial six months ago. All the stressing and worrying that you've done over the last six months means nothing. Hate to give you tough love, but that is the reality of the situation as it stands now. All right. Now. Let's get into some of the activity that uh, would suggest that perhaps maybe, maybe we are staring at an opportunity in time. And what's the worst that could happen? We're wrong. We're wrong. Ah, no, Ryan, we've got six more months of, of craziness. Hell, we've got another year of craziness. Stock's going to see a one in front of it before it see a, sees a five in front of it. Do I think that's going to happen? No. Could it happen? <laughs> really? I'll let you answer that for yourself rhetorically. Anybody who's been in the stock market more than five minutes understands that anything can happen and you need to in invest accordingly. Before you invest, you need to mentally prepare yourself to prepare for the unexpected, okay? And it will allow you to stand the test of time like I have with this story. Strong, convicted, no doubt about it. It has tested my tolerance. Absolutely, because I am playing a game right now that I don't have decades of experience in. I'm a value investor. I have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in value investing strategy that I didn't fall on tilt and sell it all and say, I just think that Hylion is great and it's good and it's great and good. And so therefore, I'm going to buy it all. I watched Rat Pack stocks and he said, hey, Hylion's a good company. I'm going to buy it all. I'm going to trade in my 401k and buy all Hylion. Trying to kind of scoff at the idea that YouTube might not be an okay place for people to come and get ideas on, but to focus on that idea that you have to be hypersensitive and hypercritical over every piece of information that you have. People like listening to me because I'm very fluent. I'm very elegant with my explanation. And nobody explains highly on like I do. So th that, that's why people tune into it. They may tune in for 60 minutes and they may turn that off and be like, hmm, maybe I feel a little bit better about my position. Right on. We've done our job. Fantastic. But where I don't want people to go awry is, man, Ryan's a stud. I want to go buy 10,000 shares uh, of the company because Dennis Gallagher has just bought 10,000 shares of the company or whatever. He bought 20, but we're going to talk about that in a sec. But the very power of social media, where it not be misconstrued as a place to hype stock rather than just profile uh, good companies that probably got uh, the short end of the stick over the last couple of years. Look at the short interest activity on Hylian over the last couple of years. Those people have made bank with an interest in seeing Hylion fail. If they make it, none of that is going to matter up until this point in time. Now, whether or not this point in time transitions now or it transitioned at its last base of $2.65 where it progressed through that last all-time low only to uh, run up after a quarter that I thought was marginal at best, okay? It's fair to suggest maybe that we are at the precipice of an impasse here uh, with the company. And my opinion means nothing. My opinion means nothing. 
why are you providing your opinion if it means nothing, Ryan? Well, because there's massive insider buying and institutional buying right now to suggest that my opinion uh, is a little bit more fact-based than just a lone opinion from me coming through my microphone through the little independent investor channel that could. Doot, 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 doot. Dennis Gallagher purchases 20,000 shares. Dennis Gallagher is the cheap uh, operations officer with Hylion. He is an insider. When insiders start to buy the company, I would suggest that that's probably a little bit more of a bullish sign than insiders selling the company. Yes, would you agree with that? Can we all just give a fist bump with each other and agree? John Panzer, who is the new CFO, he hasn't been on board for more than a quarter, just gave his first Q3 address purchased 25,000 shares, and he did so in two different blocks. If you look at the Form 4 submitted to the SEC, you can identify there that the man paid um, $3.26, I believe, for one of his blocks of shares. I think he was at 305 or 310 For the other block, both blocks above where its current share price is right now at $2.99, what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. I do not want to presume the intentions of these two individuals. What I would suggest and extrapolate as a retail investor that you can sit back and understand, yes, indeedy, that insiders are buying, not selling the company. Yes, they are buying, not selling the company. Yes, let's take a moment and reflect on that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Two big insiders with the company. Mr. Panzer has been... In the industry a long, long time, uh, he spoke as if he was very interested. There was one question on the Q&A where he talked about being brought on to the Hylion team. Very cool stuff, man. Uh, he kind of codifies some of the excitement that a lot of the Hylion investors have about this opportunity and watching it grow and you know, watching the electrified powertrain move goods in a way that is significantly less pollutive than um, our current uh, posture with uh, diesel um, and and the opportunity to maybe even drive an, a net zero emissions profile. Pretty special stuff. Um, insofar as purchasing large blocks of shares, um, my share position right now as it stands is about 13,050. 13,050 and there's a few odd um, pockets of shares that I may have tied up in options contracts. I'm going to lose out on my December strikes that will expire next month. I'm totally fine with it. It's a wash. Um, I'll take the uh, tax loss on those. I won't have a choice, guys. Um, it's either I surrender the contracts or I let them expire, and that's exactly what I, I, I'm doing. Um, I could roll those down, but there's no no real reason to do that as some of those strikes were as high as, I think, $10. Um, which I thought, my goodness, if I couldn't pick up the shares for its IPO price at 10, um, that was really the bet. And I lost, I lost and and I'll lose a little bit of few, few bucks on that, but I'll take the tax loss on that. And we'll look to reevaluate, maybe reestablish uh, those options going forward at a lower strike. Some of the more lucrative uh, uh, um, cash secured puts that I have right now um, are, are around the $3 mark, which is really, really good. If if we're doing the same delivery um, next November <laughs> and the stock is less than three dollars, then I'll eat crow. But um, the the bold bet is such to suggest that it's going to be above that limit, um, and I think we could close out the year this year in 2022 above that limit. But um, the insider buying is exciting. It's good good to see that. Um, it is what it is. Uh, you don't know what type of time frame they have. You don't know what type of excitement they have around what they've been able to observe. Uh, and I certainly don't want to presume that they've seen specifics. Um, that's not uh, what I do. That's not in the best interest of the story here. What we can uh, uh, ex extract from the, um, the SEC form is that those shares have been bought. Um, and uh, it's exciting times, maybe a potential catalyst in the stock here looking at the stock that's been basing for quite a long time at around the around the $3 mark. Let's just call it for what it is, all right? And as we move on to the institutions, there's a who's who of who owns this company. Uh, I, I We all know about BlackRock and Vanguard and their large positions in the company, rightfully so. They're going to make a truckload. We all know that General Electric being the 
really inserting themselves as one of the largest shareholders, uh, number three uh, in position base at just uh, over five and a half million shares in the company. Um, so really interesting. They are the third largest and and they are and have a vested interest, obviously, with their chopping um, of their uh, Corno technology from their additives division. Uh, and it was interesting to see um, th them taking uh, that share compensation in the company. I'm fairly certain that General Electric probably determined that Hylion would not go to zero. Maybe they thought that it would go to $1 based on all of the Yahoo threads out there that uh, are providing people sound financial advice, right, to just wait until the company goes to 50 cents. Um, the problem with that is those bastards have their own self-interest in mind, and it reeks uh, of manure. So um, if you ever want to go and see what a big, big uh, mountain of manure smells like, just kick into the Yahoo thread. You'll find guys like Benny in there who are serving their own self-interest sitting in a corner somewhere in this country up in the freaking foothills of some mountain all by themselves with their nose in the corner uh, making posts in there to try to drive this company down for their own self-interest. It's the wonderful thing about social media is it opens up opportunity out there uh, for some of the most pathetic people on this earth to actually have a voice. <laughs> yeah, pathetic people, really lowliest of people on the earth who ones that want to go on and influence others for their own personal gain. That's just fantastic. And uh, um, that activity will not uh, will not uh, subside. Uh, until Hylion decides to go ahead and do something that nobody expects them to do, and that's actually go up in value. Mm -hmm. And I will be one of those really, really funny advocates of the bull camp to have in that um, in that uh, uh, in that circle when that actually does happen, because you're going to see a different side of me, and it's going to be one funny mother effing delivery when I have my opportunity. Don't get married to a stock. What does that mean, Paul? What exactly does that mean? All right. This is investing in the stock market. Did you just hear that at some point along the line and think that this is advice that you need to throw out there to the grander uh, investing community? So one person that I know that actually marries stock, and his name is Warren Buffett. Have you ever heard of him? He's a pretty well-renowned investor, and what he does is he buys stock and keeps them indefinitely. Mm -hmm. So while you're suggesting that maybe people, or me specifically, shouldn't marry stock because I'll be, I'll be hurt, which is an emotion, and emotion has no place in stock market investing, I would suggest maybe that you retool your cliches and start to have an original thought for yourself maybe. And then I'll come back and subscribe back to your channel when you actually have an original thought that's yourself and not something that you've either bit from somebody else or regurgitated for yourself to sound really, really interesting to a viewing audience on YouTube that you're trying to garner to build your own message. Mm hmm mm hmm Citadel Advisors, 1.1 million shares outstanding now for the company. Uh, it represents an increase of 700% in their share position. The value has increased a little over 600% uh, in their holding. Uh, so really nice to see that increase from Citadel. It was the largest percentage of increase that I was able to check uh, and garner. And a lot of these insights I actually am taking from Silent Alert who's one of the very, very few with me. I know you guys are really, really awesome and, and really supportive of Helion. I am not. Uh, I am absolutely not. I've unsubscribed from Helion. I do not support somebody just going on and regurgitating content and being really, really tricky by taking the the Hylion image and just turning it upside down and, and then putting out that content. I don't need regurgitated bullshit, okay? Just come on and tell me your name and your age and your favorite effing color. Why? Because it's going to be original. All right. And I can't, I can't help support somebody that comes on and just takes content that's put out in due faith by Hylion and then just push through a social media conduit with no additional commentary, no nothing. 
Um, you can not like me for that. That's fine. Uh, but I cannot support that stuff. As a matter of fact, um, I am very, very vocal on his channel to remind him that there's nothing or her. I don't know who it is. I don't know who this person is. I don't know who the personality is. It seems to me that there's an intent to grow a message through the highly on hype. And I do not want to see those people benefit when this uh, story actually turns around. You don't deserve it. Sorry. Um, I believe in hard work. If you can do something uh, in some degree or some capacity that I do, and that's come on and talk from here and from here, good luck. You won't be able to, but at least come up with something original, please. Name, age, favorite cover, uh, color, where you're uh, domiciled in. And there's going to be people who are like, Ryan, you're, that's not right. No, I am right. I am right. Piss off. All right. YouTube is about original thought and content. If your idea is just to come on and regurgitate something that's already available in the public domain, you'll get no sympathy from me. But Silent Alert is one of those very, very few people, very original, very, very genuine, very, very good content, and very detail-driven, very, very fact basis driven and he shares that through Twitter. It's the best conduit that I find. I'm catching his shorts now on YouTube. I'm subscribed, and I'm a staunch supporter. He has an open-door policy on the Independent Investor Channel. He can come on anytime he wants to. My Friday live stream would be a fantastic venue to get to rap with this guy. Understand a little bit more, because where you will pick up attributes from a silent alert, they will benefit you. Therefore, you earn my endorsement of that content if you pick it up because you're going to get those attributes where you can only receive so many attributes from me. I'm only one voice, right? But where that steady, calm, you know, deliberate thought process is aimed at actually helping an individual, uh, that 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 is the content that I will support. So Silent Alert it was uh, I, I went on to his Twitter feed and I actually pulled these numbers because I remember reviewing them. I just didn't remember the specifics of all the purchases from this week that were disclosed. And the last one, the downgrade heard round of uh, round the world. These folks had the audacity to downgrade the stock to two dollars and twenty five cents on uh, November the tenth. The remember the earnings call came out November the ninth. The downgrade came out the morning of the tenth, and on the exact same day they were buying, and they were buying in the tune of increasing their position to 450,000 shares. These are our friends with Goldman Sachs. I will be drinking a top shelf watermelon martini while I'm laughing my ass off someday in talking about how pathetic, how pathetically stupid and obvious this game is. Scathing. Yes. Yes. Social media. Yes. Challenge the status quo. Yes. Challenge what you think you know about expertise and professionalism within the industry. <laughs> Come on, guys, wake up and smell the coffee. All right. If they could step on your head and crush you into oblivion, they would. Okay. These professionals don't have your best interest in mind. They're not looking out for you in any capacity whatsoever. All right. So for those, those poor unfortunate souls, poor unfortunate souls that sold in response to the Mark Delaney downgrade. Oh, my favorite Mark Delaney. What a fantastic soul this freaking fruitcake is. Downgrades the stock and then his parent company or parent sponsor or whatever, if they're even associated, who the hell knows, goes and buys the company. An increase of 170% in their share position. Told you to maintain your sell rating. We maintain the sell rating. We not only initiate a sell rating, we maintain that sell rating. Sell the stock here as quickly as you possibly can. Sell the stock. I'm not neutral. I'm not telling you to hold the stock. And I'm sure as hell not telling you to buy the stock. Rather, I'm telling you to sell the stock. And I'm telling you that if you do not sell the stock, the stock is going to be worth $2.25 because that is our 12-month price target going in. And oh, by the way, with all that said, we're just going to go ahead and sneak in here and buy ourselves a little bit of it. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and do a complete 180 for all you mathematical minds out there, a complete 180 from what we're telling you to do, you retail investors, 
Do you think that other institutions that are gobbling up stock in this company right now look at that and they're like, okay, yeah, Goldman, uh, right on. A little bit of gamesmanship there, huh? Hi, hey, how about how about dinner tonight? That sounds good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you're lucky enough to catch my message, it will create a little bit of cynicism in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be cynical. Don't be such a sheep, okay? Um, if you find that uh, you have had your nose up the uh, backside of others the, your entire life, pull your snout out of that backside. It smells like shit, okay? Nobody likes to smell that stuff, all right? Think for yourself, okay? Very cool stuff. Goldman Sachs increases position. Let's get into a little bit of what I feel like is going on right now. Hyleon doesn't have a product. Awesome. Remember that fruitcake? Hyleon doesn't have a product. They are now integrated. They are running the Hypertruck ERX test uh, models with Green Path Logistics. Green Path Logistics is a who's who in the transportation industry. They do business with everybody. Now, why is this significant? It is significant because Green Path runs uh, a 100% alternative to diesel fuel fleet. Alternative to diesel fuel, compressed natural gas, renewable natural gas. And I am quite certain that a Hylion fits like a round peg uh, in Green Path Logistics business. They have not been nothing but bullish on the uh, Hylion story. They do sit on the Hypertruck ERX Council, and they have been staunch advocates of the product and the program and the initiative from the start. Hylion doesn't have a product. Okay, Green Path is going to be out of luck. They're going to have to actually buy Nikola and Tesla trucks because Hylion is going to cease to exist because they don't have a product. Right now, the product is being placed into the rigor of over-the-road transport. Is it safe to suggest that the Hypertruck ERX is going to look drastically different five years from now? Probably. Yeah, probably. But is it safe to say that we have a groundbreaking enough of a solution to actually be put into rigor that, oh, by Paul's admission, looks really, really good. The truck looks good. The truck looks good. I wish I could go back and find the spot where he was actually challenging that it was just a bolt-on type of version and that nobody was going to go for that. They need the new and advanced and good-looking Tesla truck. And by God, have you seen that Nikola Trey Bev? Man, you see how nice it looks? You see how awesome it looks? <coughs> it's nice because it fits my narrative. <laughs> but no trucker in the right mind is going to want to get into that stupid looking thing and pull into a truck stop. They're going to get their ass kicked. It's stupid looking. Sorry, stupid looking. I tell it like it is. It's stupid looking. Anybody else feel the same? It's just stupid looking. It's dumb. It's idiotic. Wegmans, another player here up in upstate New York. Every time I go hit the freeways, I was just in, uh, not upstate, but middle state, uh, New York yesterday, Wegmans trucks, boom, one after another, boom, boom, they are who's who. They've declared that they've been able to take their single uh, uh, trailers and move them up into the tandem trailer with the assistance of the hybrid EX unit. Happy customer? I don't know. Is it a bridge to electrification? I, I seem to think so. Um, am I in the camp or would I profess to you and come on and just dump on Hylion and suggest that they don't have a product insofar as like this whole relationship with Wegmans is just going to go away? Ah! Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Is the evolution of this technology as we finalize the solution going to evolve to a better place? Yeah, probably. Which would suggest that is the perfect iteration of the Hypertruck ERX out now? No, no, it's not. And it's okay. It's okay. Have we bridged enough of a gap providing a solution in way of an electrified powertrain solution to actually augment the class eight space? <laughs> My bullish conviction says that we have. My bullish conviction would uh, freakishly, and I am a freak, suggest that maybe November 20th of 2022 might just be an interesting impasse to reflect upon. Don't know. We'll see. I'll drink to it someday. Not yet, though, my friends. Not yet, my friends. Detmar, work down in the Permian Basin and the oil sands of Texas. Um, they are working their Hypertruck ERX. I'm super glad that they got one of the demo models of the Hypertruck ERX. Fuck, they've earned it. Those guys are badasses. You want to talk about maybe the number one supporter of Hylion's message since the beginning? Matt Detmar has been all over this, all over it. Um, and he is a public, they, Detmar, Matt being the president owner, he's a legacy owner in the company, um, has been named in the who's who of environmental stewardship 
where there's been a lot of a lot bigger fleets uh, that have fallen to the wayside in comparison to what Detmar has done in their initiative. Why? Because maybe they want to. Maybe they see the writing on the wall. Maybe it is a foreseen paradigm shift in the industry in that if you don't play ball, you might actually be left behind. Um, maybe they're just trying to do the right thing. Seems that way. Seems like they're actually very satisfied with the with the product performance and where there's a potential edge uh, in the in the fleet and you know about that edge, you can divine a strategic advantage in business very, very quickly by exploiting this. And that's exactly what Matt's doing with Detmar. Hats off to him. I think it's fantastic. So continued watch in that progression. There's many, many more, many customers out there being photographed in the fleet. You got to join the Highly on Discord group to make sure that you're being uh, brought up to speed on some of those things when they find those products out in the wild. From my perspective, it's all about exposure. It's all about getting that product into the hands of the very fleets that we serve. And you name me a fleet that's providing more in the trenches. In the trenches. Dirty elbows. In the trenches. Work than Hylion. I'll wait. I'll wait. Three bucks a share? No shit? Okay. All right. I will have the last laugh at this. I guarantee you. There's been a lot of people who have stood aside over the last year, year and a half that I've engaged in this project alone in a hammock, drinking my rum punch alone. Okay. Now, a few people that I have mentioned in the course of this video um, are exempt from that. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's been a few sober trades. I really like Wall Street Engineer. Super good guy. Great guy. There's a lot out there that I really, really endorse. Um, sober trades, Wall Street Engineer, um, Silent Alert as of late. Uh, Andreas Krakowskis is also being a little more active on Twitter. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Andreas has always had my endorsement. Uh, um, as a, as an arm of the Discord group, because they need to be on these major platforms to get that exposure and rope people into the Discord group. The Discord group is probably going to end up having hundreds of thousands. If not, we'll go for a million subscribers in the Discord group eventually. Um, so get in now and get that information while it's out there to try to chronicle what type of reach Ileana is having with, within the very fleet that they're looking to serve. They're looking to be a leader in electrified powertrain solutions. That's what they're looking to do. Well, to do that, they have to introduce their powertrain to the Class 8 space. Are they doing that? Are they doing that? Mm -hmm. They're doing it now. We will reach a catalyst where we, where we switch. I'm not going to come on and imply that there's something big going on at Hylion. I'm not going to do that because what we are privy to in the public space is enough to chew on. If I'm the CFO or the COO of the company and I'm buying stock, I can review that form for just as much as anybody else. It's awesome. They're buying stock in the company. Fantastic. Um, was I bullish 18 months ago? Yeah. Um, did I enter into the stock and, and, and marry the stock early? Yeah, I still own the shares. Who cares? Who cares? Doesn't even matter. Bought the stock. I'm going to continue to buy. I'm going to monitor this company. And if it continues to dip down into that in between the two and three dollar category, I'll just be buying more. I'll be accumulating shares at this base. But I actually think we're probably, mark my words, we're probably a short time away from never, ever seeing these numbers again. Never. That's what I talk about. November 20th, 2022 is an impasse to maybe uh, point ourselves in a direction here. As we look forward, we close it down. I want you to start to imagine for yourself what you envision a 2023 in Highland Holdings to look like. All right. Thomas Ely has laid out the path to commercialization, which should be end of 2023, latter portion of 2024. The stock should take a bump based on the perceived value and making good on those deliveries that have been promised for quite some time now. We've known about these orders on the books, the ability to garner and generate new interest and churn, how much this fleet reach is going to actually uh, materialize and turn into interest. 
but I want you guys to think about it from two perspectives. And we'll shut down uh, this weekly highlight on video. I want you to think about it from the perspective of connections. Think about how many companies, think about how many share owners, think about how many connections this company has. And the biggest one that comes to my mind you guys know I'm covering a microcap company right now that has nothing to do with Hyleon. However, it is in the same space with regard to uh, initiatives for a cleaner environment and a cleaner world. They do have the collaboration with major players in the industry, and there's no bigger major player in this industry right here in uh, engineering and manufacturing of internal combustion engines and research on this front than Cummins and Hyleon has collaborated with Cummins. And I do see that seed of collaboration paying off some point in 2023 as they uh, execute along their time frame of receiving the CARB, NHTSA, EPA certification. And it's going to be that stamp of approval on this product that allows us to put that milestone behind us, realize that value in that milestone, and look to push toward final iteration of the ERX to be scaled up in mass commercialization, all right? The last thing I want to leave you with, and this is the nugget for you guys that get to stay with me for 58 minutes and you're just enthralled at my entertainment value. At minute 58, I'm going to release this. Why don't the fleets just stay with diesel? It works. Piss on the environment. Diesel has dominated. Yeah, we pay higher fuel costs. That's all right, but it sure is reliable. And I know that I can get my customers uh, goods from point A to point B using diesel. Why change? That's Hylion. I don't, I don't need Hylion. I got diesel. I'm good. I have a network of diesel providers. It's readily available. It is uh, dependable. And we can succumb to the fuel high cost and weather through it by cutting costs elsewhere in the business. I'm going to stay with diesel. I want to leave you with this as we enter into 2023, guys. Government incentives, number one, to pull away and provide that level of uh, incentive. We know about the dollar credit for RNG, CNG, both on the consumer and producer side. We know about the $40,000 credit on the upfront cost, upfront cost, which is the biggest pain point of entering into this new technology, okay? That's government incentive. But with regard to my fleets just suggesting and just staying hard on the diesel front, government mandates is what I want to leave you with. Government mandates is what is going to require that OEMs turn out a certain number off of the fleets and that fleets themselves have that reciprocated relationship with the OEMs to take in-house and purchase those new units and not put them into a five to seven year cycle to be pollutive. And it's those government mandates that make Hylion uh, worthy of discussion at this particular impasse, when it's going to be, whether or not it's going to be a floodgate, whether or not it's going to be a wait to the last moment and then rush toward the solution. I don't know, but these government mandates and these government incentives are coming and they are opposing forces all aimed at supporting the transition to something uh, other than a diesel dominated future and allowing these new solutions to be actually introduced to the fleet and actually being looked at as a viable solution for transportation into the future. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in for the totality of the message. Really appreciate your continued support of this message. I want to thank and give the shout outs to all of the content creators surrounding this topic. We are laser focused on providing the most recent updates with myself and the community. Fantastic job to all you guys. I appreciate you tuning in for the totality of this message and good luck in your investment future.